Hey everyone, we are live. Welcome to the Killer Be Killed podcast on this St. Patrick's Day. Uh, George, uh, good to see you as always. And I'm sober. Uh, well, um, yes, I have a um, soda. <laughs> <laughs> so, Salancha, Aaron Gobrales, as I drink my soda. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, First thing I want to uh, uh, just I want to take some time to talk about our good buddy Dan Neto, yes. who I discovered passed away. Um, I just want to uh, share. Um, it's just uh, Dan was an instructor for us. Um, he, uh, man, it's been, God, 15 years that I've known him. I've been here probably about 15, 16, uh, probably about 12, 12 years that I that I first met Dan. Um so I'll pull a couple things up here. Uh, first, I want to pull up his obituary. He died um, in October this past year. Uh, let me just uh, share my screen. Can I share? Where are you? Okay, here we go. And um, let's see, share screen. I mean... Where's my, where's my window? No, 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 sorry. That's not on Brave. I don't want to do that. Uh, here. Okay, so. There we go. Okay, so there's a young Dan. Uh, he was born, uh, he's passed away 61 years old uh, on October 23rd, 2021. 20, uh, um, so I graduated John Adams High School where he played the trombone for the marching band. Uh, he won uh, some many uh, state awards for his uh, music. Loved fishing, weightlifting, football growing up. He loved dogs and... Um, he uh, enlisted in the uh, Air Force in 1980, uh, where he served for 20 years. And Dan was known by his friends uh, as Dano. Took him to Bahrain, the Persian Gulf, and Osan Air Base in South Korea. Turned to the U.S. and retired from Edwards Air Force Base in California. Uh, while uh, in the Air Force, Dan took an interest in the martial arts, learning karate and hapkido. He used those skills to begin his business as a self-defense instructor with a self-defense company. He enjoyed uh, teaching uh, the young and the old alike how to defend themselves. Um, Dan, uh, yeah, just a really, um, just a really uh, incredible guy. Um, you know, I actually personally uh, certified him and um, he uh, he f he took a fall um, probably when he was in his late mid to late fifties. Uh, broke his neck, severe um, head trauma. That's possibly what triggered uh, his Alzheimer's. Yeah. And uh, you know we used to get. I mean, it's in Indiana. Um, we used to get uh, you know some you know, text messages from him and some calls where, you know, you feel, um, feel like you want to do something and help him, it, you know, but it was, it's frustrating. And I tried reaching out to his daughter. Um, I don't know, just to see, you know, just to get a real kind of update on what he was doing. And, and we haven't heard from him in probably over a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, he um <laughs> he was uh um yeah so that just prompted me like yesterday to um to reach out to him and try to just see so i just you know googled him he wasn't on facebook anymore obviously and uh and there was his obit so dano i mean thank you for your you know for being a part of us and uh I got um. I want to share a clip here. He uh he loved being a part of the self defense company. Loved being an instructor. Yeah, he was great, man. Yeah. He was really active. Uh, very successful. In fact, I got a um. 
you know, even even after his accident, he was still pushing to to get back and to continue teaching. Yeah, that was what was frustrating. Yeah, um, because we were trying to help him, and he know, and he was trapped within, um, you know, within within his own body and his mind. You know, Scott, uh, hold on. Birdhouses built a website. So I, I just. Um, you know, uh, here I got a little, I go, I, I want to share a clip of him on uh, Fox news as an instructor for us, a uh, little video tribute, uh, to Dan, I just, uh, where he was, uh, helping, um, he got involved in helping the local, uh, students in, uh, college of students in South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> Uh, you know, teach them ourselves to teach them our brand self defense. Now, the saying goes, you can never be too careful. And when it comes to defending ourselves, that is very, very true. But the good news is, you don't have to be a victim. You can be a victor. And here to show us some helpful moves. Dano! Show me some helpful moves. If you ever do get in trouble, is professional self defense instructor Daniel Nano. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. It's such an important thing. Particularly, there are so many students who are going back to college and kids who are back in school. What would you say is the number one thing they need to focus on when it comes to self defense? Well, the, the basics are. Yeah. There's three things you should never do. Mm -hmm. First of all, you should never walk alone. Okay. Uh, always uh, use a buddy system or work walk in small groups together. Mm -hmm. Second, never take shortcuts. Mm. Um, stay on light routes, the main routes. Okay. Um, obviously, more lighting. There's more people on those main routes, mm -hmm. uh, and also emergency phones mm -hmm. that you have access to. Now here's something that I've heard before, which is if you're if you're driving and you're a young lady out there or even a young guy, you shouldn't take the same route every day. You should try and mix it up. What do you think about that? I think it's a good idea. Okay. I think it's an excellent idea. Um, you have to understand uh, predators need to isolate mm -hmm. you from the crowd. Right. Um, if they know your patterns, it makes it easier for them to, to isolate you. Now, is there anybody who's more of a specific target than, say, somebody else out there, or do we all need to be aware of this? I think everyone needs to be aware, and uh, what people need to really understand is that you need to make yourself a hard target. Mm -hmm. That's what predators and criminals look for. If you're an easy target, you're not paying attention to your surroundings, um, you're overloaded with groceries, mm -hmm. you're talking on your cell phone as you're walking, you've got your phones in your ears mm -hmm. uh, as you're exercising outside. That identifies you as an easy target. Right. Makes you more vulnerable. But, but there, there are some moves that you actually teach people in case something were to happen that you can really defend yourself quickly and easily. And the one thing you were talking about is you want to strike fast, quick, and be done with it. <laughs> strike often. Often. Okay, so show us a couple examples of these here. Guys, this is going to be very helpful for you. Okay, uh, one of the simplest uh, ones is what we call um, a finger dart and a whip kick okay. technique. And basically, as an attacker is approaching you, sure. getting ready to come into your personal space, okay. it's not really important that you actually make impact with your attacker, but to get him to flinch. Okay. And, and basically, if you were coming toward me, mm -hmm. I would just whip out my fingers. Okay. Be at, a, be at what we call a blade position. A blade position. I like that. A it, blade position, guys. That's <laughs> an area for him to hit you. Okay. And easier for you to maintain your balance. Right. It'd be a, a finger dart to the eyes, mm -hmm. followed up with a whip kick. Oh, I like the little right whip kick. The, yeah, uh, there you go. Groin area. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and secondly? Was, secondly is what we call an elbow spike. Okay. Um, that's if you're talking on your cell phone and you've let your guard down and someone's coming up on you. Okay. And you just happen to catch them out of your peripheral vision. The it's elbow just comes up. with up. the elbow. Not necessarily trying to make contact, but now he's got to work around that elbow. So it's like you. deflecting and also taking his attention away from what's happening, right? Exactly. Or her, as the case may be. And after that elbow spike... Mm -hmm. You gotta work it out. Two, wow. Two strikes with the edge of the hand, which okay. is what we primarily use, mm -hmm. um, and the heel of the hand. Wow. Okay. Well, now you're actually going to teach me something real quick here. We don't have a lot of time, so let's let's get to this uh, okay. demonstration here that All I'm right. going to learn. So, okay. Okay. first thing you want to do, I'm going to be the attacker. Okay. What I'd like you to do is to get to the blade position. Right. 
which we learned. Okay. okay. And as I'm walking forward, I right. want you to do the finger dart, which is straight, straight out. out. Okay. And I want you to follow up that up with a whip kick. Right, right there. Back. Okay. All right. Here we go. Whenever you're ready. All right, so you walk forward here and then like that? Exactly. Hey, look, at, you know, that's very actually very doable. Very easy. And that's the beauty of this system. Um, these techniques are, are, are using gross motor mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. They're easy to learn. Mm -hmm. They're easy to master. And they're easy to train at home with. It's Absolutely. And you can do it just like that. And you are actually going to be having some great classes. If anybody does want to learn these very simple techniques, you actually saw me learn one right there. You can get in touch with Daniel at 574-302-7348. Got some great self-defense classes that are coming up. He can teach you these techniques and a lot of other ones. Daniel, thank you so much for coming in. I feel safer already. How would you like to see five? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dan. A great guy. Yeah. I mean, you know, you do this long enough, you know, this happens. Um, guys come and go, but uh, really, um, yeah. I miss you, brother. You're a good dude. You know, so. Uh, so, St. Patrick's Day, George, what are you doing? Oh, I'm on a, I'm on a webinar right now before I drink. <laughs> Right. See, I started now with Coke. <laughs> That's right. With my Coke. Yeah, no, I think the plan is just, you know, I get out for a couple hours tonight, just, you know, kick back, relax. Mom's been uh, mom's been doing well lately. Oh, good, man. Um, I, I actually haven't had a chance to update everybody, but I did let you know. I'll just take a yeah. moment to please to everybody who's been following. Um, she's been doing the chemo, been doing this um, other drug called Keytruda, and um, she's been doing that, I guess, for... Uh, well, by maybe quite a few months now. Anyway, she, she had a follow-up CT scan just to see how it was going. And the good news that we got is the tumors have actually started to shrink a little bit, which obviously gives us, you know, more time. So we weren't expecting that. You know, we were, we were at the at the best, we were hoping that it was going to stay the mm -hmm. way that it was. At the worst, we were expecting it to spread more because it's already, you know, from her stomach spread into the lymph nodes and everything. So... It's, it's been spreading, but for the tumors to be getting smaller, I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. So. Right, right. All right. It's a positive step, man. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's just, again, it's all over. And I said, you hit a certain age, you know, where people that you know, I mean, there's a local woman uh, who is, uh, you know, today may be her last day. Um, you know, it's just... Uh, a friend of a friend um but it's again it's just all around and yes. you know uh, i just uh it's just you know watching her you know go through uh, you know her struggle and then of course you know our good fr friend kyle legan who died at uh 17 and then my other buddy lou mastriano who died of wasn't exactly pancreatic ca cancer but it was in that area took mm -hmm. him in like two years um so yeah here's you guys and i don't mm -hmm. and i don't know if you were ever a wrestling fan but a wrestler that i grew up loving razor ramon razor ramon <laughs> yes scott razor hall razor yeah razor. dude holy shit I yeah he, he went in with uh he, he fell and broke his hip had surgery which apparently loosened a uh a blood clot fucking three heart attacks later he was on life support right <laughs> you know what those guys put their bodies through and then whatever i don't you know you know chemicals they're putting in their bodies you know i i just uh you know yeah it's a professional wrestlers are rough 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 life yes. you know and people will say that yeah it's technically staged but it's just you know such a um you know uh perform you know a, a there's such a tear on your body i mean these guys are getting real injuries and they're Absolutely. performing like they're on the road like almost like 300, like over, I heard like over, over 300 days a year. Yeah. Something really stupid like that. Yeah. And that's like every night, you know, when they're out there, they're selling it, you know, it's freaking holy crap. And but, plus they're, you know, working out on top of it. Yeah. But I mean, that dude made, you know, being bad. Cool. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. It's Razor Ramon, the freaking toothpick. He was like, he looked like he was like nine feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, holy crap, man. What a what yeah. a shock that was. But I mean, when you know you you think about this, all these people that you were watch, like watching when you were younger that you kind of looked up to, like in my case especially, and they're just fucking dropping like flies now. It just yeah, you question your own mortality, man. I'll tell you. Hey, man, you know, uh, no one gets out of here alive, my friend. Ain't that ain't that the truth? <laughs> You know, so uh, today we're going to talk about the seven signs your instructor is full of shit. Um, oh, I should mention that. Uh, yeah, I, I, we didn't talk about this. I was on a Tim Larkin's podcast. Uh, Tim Larkin, uh, Target Focus Training, has been yep. around for a long time. I had a really, really good conversation with him on the phone for almost, we were on the podcast for almost like two hours. We talked about everything. As soon as that's up, I'll share it. Uh, really nice guy, man. Nice. Um, yeah, we're looking to get, you know, other guys on there as it, you know, dawned on me. I'm like, you know, there's, there's only so many guys, so many like legitimate type of people. I mean, we may disagree on certain things, but the intents there, I mean, yes. our thing is like, and we're all of the mind that you don't need to train for years to know how to protect yourself. Exactly. You know, I mean, and we want to make this information, um, accessible to everybody first and foremost i want to put it in a real format where like you can learn some things immediately and be be a hard target right now absolutely you, you know and there's nothing more that well we'll get to this in a second but you know when guys are telling you that you've got to train for years to be able to defend yourself like you're you know it's not a prize fight you know, you're, it's not a, it's not a match, you know, you're not, it's not a competition. That's right. You know? We're not chasing, you know, we're not chasing that elusive black belt here for Christ's sakes. Right. I mean, good. I, like we said, you've got black belts. I've got black belts. Yeah. Nothing, I, nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, but understand the difference between, you know, martial arts sport and reality, you know, and then let me ask you, it's like, well, what if you went and you did like, you know, look, man, I, you know, judo, the first thing they teach you is uh break falls. Mm -hmm. right uh karate first thing they're teaching you is stances and you basic punches and kicks okay great but are they telling you how to maintain awareness when you're getting to your car that's right right when does that happen yeah right what do you do how do you know when you're how do you know when you're getting set up that's my father that's what's that it's what drinking time that. <laughs> right exactly it says ha oh, have another sip that's well, right <laughs> If that goes off every three minutes, that's exactly what I'm going to be thinking. You know. That. <laughs> right. So you know what happens where you know you're getting you know you want to you want to be able to have something that you can use you know immediately, and then as you train, no, like, and we're not saying I'm like we work out, we train, we teach. I'm like it's like it depends on where you want to get off on the highway, yeah. right? If you just want to be okay, you know, I want to be aware and I want to live safer. And this is where it starts. And most people will get to, you know, some primary tactics and some prime. That's what we do with like, you know, 60 minutes self-defense and one shot exactly. fight enders and stuff like that, where you're like, okay, this is like 60 minutes self-defense, you know, with the aware course. I'm like, you got that. I'm like, okay, that's good. And then, you know, you want to get more aggressive, you know, you got to start training more and learning more. Absolutely. But it's not like, you know, as you can train the correct things the right amount of times as opposed to learning a sport and learning a culture. And, you know, this, you know, the, the, you said there's like, we separated like three things there's self defense, there's cultural fighting arts, and then there's combat sports. Yeah. Right. So when you, you know, he told, you know, we always, we always got these, we always got these stories. And it's funny. He told the story about, um, a very prominent MMA fighter whose uh, brother was attacked, you know, was uh, mugged at knife point. Now we both admit, like if we got in the ring with that MMA fighter, he'd freaking destroy us. That's right. You know, I mean, there's yeah. no doubt about it. I mean, it's just, it's a professional athlete, a professional fighter, but he's like, this guy's, he, I go, my brother's asking me shit. And he's like, I don't know what to tell him. And it's just like a different, you know, application for what it is. And it's not a matter of, you know, what, you know, you know, what, you know, someone, some professional fighter can do. It's a matter of what you can do. You know, it's like me, you know, teaching you, uh, you know, soccer and then, okay. Yeah. So you're going to go out and beat a professional 
soccer athlete, you know, at, you know, I'm like, uh, no. You know, and, and I think and I think that's the biggest problem, too, is everybody just assumes that self-defense and fighting are one in the same. And right. That couldn't be furthest from the truth. I mean, no. obviously, if you can fight, it's beneficial to you. But at the end of the day, right, self-protection is a completely different animal. And that's that's why we do what we do. Right. And, you know, knowing how to. You know, and if you know how to fight, let's say you've got a base skill set in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mm -hmm. right? We can, or MMA, whatever, we can adapt that skill set to, you know, to self defense. Yes. <laughs> right. So that's the, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's one of the, that's the, uh, you know, the main thing. You can adapt that. And when, you know, we talk about, you know, using, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Judo or wrestling or MMA or boxing, or whatever, for self defense. The one main problem with all of that, whether it's effective or not, is that it requires you to be profession, uh, proficient at the basics, at the primary skill set before you can do the other stuff. Yep. So we're taking that out of the equation and showing you exactly what you can do with no prior training. And then if you have prior training, you can adjust what you're doing. I mean, look, you know, you're a, you know, somewhat, in, I'm assuming you're a somewhat intelligent, competent individual. And if you're able to train in a specific martial art for an extended period of time, you'll have no problem adapting for what we have for you. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, and, yeah. and I think, I think yes and no to that. And we're the only place that I run into um, combat sports or traditional martial arts being a real detriment to your self-defense training is it gives you too many choices. And when you have too many choices, you think Hicks law, right? If you have right. too many yes. options, right. You do nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. More than three options. That slows your reaction time. Yeah. You know, we try to give you one you know, like option yeah. and try one option to... for multiple situations. Is right. If I could only use one technique to, or what, and one tactic to handle everything, I would, you know, that's what I would do. I yep. think we've got, you know, this, this, um, you know, uh, we like to collect things and like techniques are like, you know, the little shiny rocks, you know, yep. they're like, you know, we, the more, the better. And it's like the more, the worse, mm -hmm. um, the best compliment we get is that, Oh, it's so simple. Or why didn't I think of that? It's like, exactly. You should, you, you, this is why, this is why you're going to remember it. And this is why it works. Um, Tom's just checking in. Tom is here. Hey man, good to see you. Um, so today we're going to talk about the seven signs your instructor is full of shit. And I love this. I'm going to just post a blog post real quick. There's probably more signs, but we're just being nice. <laughs> yeah, we can, you know, we'll get into, I'm sure it's going to, it's going to spark some other stuff. No. Um, but you know, I'll just share it with you. So you know, the one one thing I want to get into, and you know, one thing I want to start with is that not all self-defense advice is good. Some people will say that any self-defense training is better than none. Now, mm. I will I will say this with a caveat is that if you're any if any form of resistance is better than no resistance. Right? So the your attacker so you got to think of your attacker and as you know a predator and you're the prey so he expects you to react a certain way with his approach and one of them is not to fight back he may get resistance he may get some shock but who you're dealing with is someone who has previous success in imposing their will as a way of life Right. So this is like, or this falls in the, you know, one thing I'll, you know, touch on. It's like, you know, the whole trained versus untrained. I love when people will troll and they'll say, well, that'll work against somebody untrained, but not somebody trained. And I'm like, my answer is like, dude, I would rather go against the guy who's been training two or three times a week at his local martial arts studio than the guy who's been out in the street living off of what he can kill. Yeah. Right. Hands down. So, you you know, I know the guy who's training is most likely probably a good guy, not necessarily a sociopath and might not be, you know, isn't necessarily trying to kill me. Right. And then 
add to that, you know, whatever weapons we have on us and all the other crap that nasty surprises we have. So anyway, you know, not all self-defense advice is good. And the first number one is always walk away. You know, I get the sentiment here, you know, which, you know, is you, you don't want to fight, right? I mean, we're not here. Like violence is a last absolute last resort, but always walk away. Always. Um, Does that mean turn your back on a potential threat? Right. Which is ridiculous. And, you know, you, you don't, you have no idea what this person's intentions are. No, and, and you and you can see there that you know with people who say that they are trying to give good advice, but it's missing the second half. You know, the second half being only if and when you can, right? Right. Always walk away only if and when you can. Easy. Because there's different right. times where it's just not safe to fucking do it. Right. The first, you know, your the basic self defense is escape. Yep. Right. That's like get the hell. One is well. First, sorry, let's back it up. One is avoid the potential situations. Right. So when like with the aware course and when we were our initial teachings, you know, it's like look at potential places of ambush, pay attention, make sure you're not getting, you know, sized up, um, you know, listen to your instinct. You know, people very rarely, very rarely an attacker is just going to all of a sudden just burst into an attack. He's right. going to be looking at you. He's going to be thinking, can I get what I want from this person? Right. And in order to do that, he has to spend some time making an assessment. And that includes watching you and following you. You know, are you alone? Do you have something I want? Can I impose my will on you? Yeah. Can I get away without being caught, injured, or identified? Right. So always walk away is not, you know, that's not a real solution. You know, uh, you know, again, you know, you know, when I'm watching these videos and these guys are just like, you know, the attacker comes up and then they just turn their back on them. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Yeah. And you don't know, this guy's armed, has intent, has friends. You don't know. You're going to you're going to end up like that person, that video that took the fucking bat to the back of the head. Remember that? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. The next one is I train to fight so I don't have to fight. Again. The sentiment is like, look, I, you know, you know, Bruce Lee gets a lot of credit for this. And, you know, it's like I train for, you know, we prepare for war so we can have peace kind of thing. Yep. I get it. Right. You don't want, you know, you're doing it. So, you know, you have options when you're dealing with people and you have that confidence, you know, but the, the real statement is, you know, I train to fight so I can fight back. I train to fight, so if I have to fight, I can. Yeah, and I can defend myself. And fight's a bad word. It should be defend and protect, but that doesn't work too well in a little catchy sentence, you know. So you do it. Look, no one wants to, right? That's I think that's primarily why a lot of people also get into this, is because they're really concerned with their ability to defend and protect. And they don't, you know, and they want to be able to, um, you know, do something about it. And then having, and then, and this sentiment kind of feeds into that not wanting to fight, you know, or being the fear of fighting, which is real. It happens to everybody. Yes. Everybody is afraid to take that step. Right. So understand that, you know, it's not. Um, you know, we're, we're walking around like some, you know, bully hard on it's, you know, we are, you know, doing this. So if we are pushed, you know, we We have, have, we have a, we have a a proper reaction. Yeah. This is my favorite. (laughs) Violence never solved anything. Yeah. I'll I'll disagree there. (laughs) Right. Uh, World War II, you know, (laughs) Flight 93, uh, you know, violence is, you know, violence sometimes is the only solution. Yep. You know, you're looking at, you know, how is it? So if someone is, you know, someone is physically attacking you, you don't, you don't fight back. Right. 
So what are we doing this for? Why am I even here? Exactly. You know, and then it's, you know, violence is never the answer, which is basically kind of the same thing. I'm like, sometimes it's the only answer. Yep. You know, as I said, it's a short, violence is a short-term solution to an immediate problem. You know, if I, you know, if you're, uh, you know, ah, uh, uh, yeah. So, you know, you got to. Well, what, what, what is it? Everybody has a plan until they're punched in the face. <laughs> right. Right. I, and uh, dude, I, I tell you, like with all the shit that I do, it's like, I never think my shit's going to work immediately. It never goes how you plan ever. Right. right? But as long as you have the base skill set and right tactics installed, you know, you can adapt and that's what we really do. And that's a problem with like, you know, specific self-defenses when it's like, Oh, I've got an answer for everything. No, we've got general answers for specific problems. Yeah. And principles. Right. So, right. Uh, use non-lethal techniques first. <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm going to use whatever gives me the tactical advantage at the time that can give me the biggest bang for my buck, right? If that's a gouge, it's a gouge. If it's hitting you in the head with a blackjack, so be it. It's like, I just want to end this thing as fast as possible because the longer contact you have with your, with your attacker, the more vulnerable you are. hundred percent. Right. So, you know, you just, that's it, you know? And again, what exactly is a question is a non-lethal technique. I know we like to talk about escalation of force an escalation of use of force, but that's usually meant with, um, whether I'm using a weapon or non-lethal weapons, not empty hand techniques at all. Empty hand techniques are considered non-lethal, right? The only thing that's really lethal are edged in um, uh, projectile weapons, firearms, and and knives. So, you know, but what exactly is a non-lethal technique? If I push you and you fall and you hit your head on the concrete, well, it was an, it was a push. It's a non-lethal technique, yeah, but with a lethal with a lethal result, <laughs> right? And this happens a lot. Yeah, you know, I mean, nobody ever, you know, a lot. You know, you you can see the cases. You know, well, you know, what was the intent? If I want to punch somebody in the face and I knock them out and they hit their head off a bar rail, mm -hmm. you know, so was my intent to kill him? Absolutely not. My intent was just to stop him and protect myself. So, you know, the only time you de-escalate or throttle down is after you've dominated the situation. Yes. Right. Then you can go and then you can, you know, go in soft and escalate to meet your attackers use of force. But before then, you know, what you don't want to do is put yourself one step behind your attacker. Right. So your attacker is coming in. God, no, you know, then if you're like, gonna, if you're going to, Let's say he uses a, you know, he uses a push. I use a push. He uses a punch. I come back with a punch. He comes back with a knife. I come back with a knife. He comes back with a gun. I'm dead. So, right. Exactly. So, you know, you're putting yourself, you're letting your attacker dictate the terms of the situation. Right. So you have to immediately come in like a lion yeah. and do what's going to, you know, stop this thing as fast as possible by whatever means possible. And let's look at it this way. Not, I mean, this would be, you know, you'd have to make a great case depending on who you are and who your attacker is. If I get pushed and then I shoot him in the chest, right? Yep. <laughs> I win. <laughs> you know, so, you know, think of it in, you know, think of it a little bit in those terms where, you know, you're, you know, like he pushes me, I'm knocking him out, right? Or whatever, because again, he's going to come, I resist, he's, you know, now it's already he's already indicated he's you know his willing intention, to fight you yeah. right he's already indicated his you know obviously intention and willingness more more to the point so you got to end it fast and you got to get ahead of him you know instead of falling behind him and keep and keep trailing him which again fall you know a lot of people miss this is a huge huge mistake and people who say this again you know really don't understand you know violence and don't have the proper respect for it okay Six, 
Always let your attacker attack first. Oh, I don't know how many times I've heard that nonsense. <laughs> let him throw the first punch. Would you let Mike Tyson throw the first punch? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know who this maniac is. Holy crap, man. I, you know, I, it's nuts. This idea is nuts. So I, but again, the intention is, well, once you know he's physically attacking you, then you're justified to defend yourself, which isn't the law. Really, this is pretty universal where you've got the, you know, he has to just show intent. And if your ability, like when we first start, if the, if we have room, we reestablish distance, right? So we set that threshold. And now after we establish distance and he breaks that threshold, now we got to go. He's already, he's already set his intent. Yes. He's, you know, his intent, you know, verbally and by manner is, you know, he's coming at me. I don't want him to come at me. You can defend yourself. Now, what comes into play is if this guy has uh, the ability and look, if it is a small child, you know, or somebody who is disabled, that is, I mean, use your common sense, right? You know, there's, there's a, there's a lot of times, you know, you can deescalate these things with, you know, really not tuning somebody up given who they are. But if this is somebody around your size, young, strong, you know, or just appears capable, um, yeah, you have the absolute 100, 110%, 100% right to go and attack first. Now, what's attack mean? Right. So does it mean a physical? I mean, his attack is his intent, not the actual technique. So the attack already starts in his mind. Right. And his you can defend yourself on intent and his his intent and his ability. And you determine his intent intent by establishing distance. And then when he keeps aggressively coming towards you, that's the attack. That's right. The assault has begun. Yes. Don't wait. Don't wait. I mean, the biggest problem I have with the vast majority with every martial arts and self-defense system out there is, you know, their primary, you know, they teach all of their defenses to wait till the guy gets their hands on them or actually takes a punch at or throws a kick or swings a club or pulls a gun. And you're like, what happened before that? Right. That's what, I mean, that's what we got it. We got to, step it in front we gotta step it in front of it. Yeah, you know, and, and I'll say this here. There's there's a system that's out there and I'm I'm not gonna name the system, but I will say they're uh they're very popular right now on social media. And um their whole thing their whole basis, I mean their their techniques are are fucking solid, but the problem is like you're talking about right now, they wait until you've been fucking ragged around and you know he even hit before you start to defend yourself, which is sad, which is sad because it really destroys the, the reality of that system. It would be great if they were much more preemptive with what they do, right. but they're not. <laughs> right. And, and that's because you're, you've got to assume this person, you know, can cause you damage. Yeah. You have to make that assumption. You know, and they get one shot. They're not just going to get one shot. They're not going to shake it. They're going to be attacking you. They're going to want to do to you what you, you want to do to them. Yes. And in order for really anything to work on any level of combat, it's, you know, strike first, strike hard, keep going. No mercy. Yes. No <laughs> mercy. Okay. This is very martial arty. It's always fight honorably. You know, and I like to say, you know, let's, you know, I want to make this clear. And this is the blog post. Live honorably. <laughs> fight, <but> dirty. <laughs> fight dirty, dude. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you will do anything that gives you the tactical advantage at the time. If it's pick up a rock, pick up a rock. You know, I, 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 I uh, did you did you ever see that old school video? It looked like it was like a 70s porn star video um, or like a 70s porn video. But it's, it's, the guy's got the fucking cucumber down there and he's got the chick like biting the fucking cucumber. <laughs> right. Right. I'm yes. Like, Beautiful. Did you see? That? I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm not hating that. Yeah. Right? I'm like, you know, this is what we're doing. I mean, as right? a dude, I, I really don't want to put my mouth near anybody else's junk, but Hey, 
<laughs> right. But you know, to your point, I'm like, yeah. if that if that's there, that presents itself. I mean, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, we're, you we're know, right. he'll probably bleed out faster than if you stabbed him in the ribs. Yeah, you know, and again, we we look at those things and people goof on them, but you're like, yeah, I'm like, that's what it is. I mean, that's what it is. And if you're down there, this is something that you have to consider and think about, right? <laughs> I know, so, and, and we and we and we goof on on guys like you know, like Master Ken. Did you, did you ever see his stick fighting? Instead of all the fancy shit, he just grabs a stick and just fucking beats a guy over the head. With it. Right, but there's right. truth to that. <laughs> Mind you, not right. Yeah. I, you know, I, and there's yeah. Again, we like we get enamored with the fancy, and you know, we, in this you know case, we get enamored with the martial arts aspect of it where you know you want to you want to always do the right thing and you do the right thing until it's time to do the wrong thing yeah right and you know and is the wrong that. thing really wrong no. <laughs> if i go home to my family it ain't the wrong thing <laughs> if it's if it works yeah you know it's the right thing you know i just you know i mean i mean there's like, you know, this is just the top seven, but there's, you know, I mean, the things where it's like, you know, like we said before, like when, when they come in and they tell you, you know, that you need adults want to come in and their primary goal is self-defense. Yeah. Right. So, you know, the problem with the martial arts studio model is that it depends on you training longer and more often in order to make money. And while, you know, no one will, you know, while on the surface to admit that, you know, to admit that is tough, but that's the reality of what it is. So if well, they, it's a business, if, right. It's a, it's a business. They wouldn't be there fucking teaching if they didn't have the money coming in to be able to do it. <laughs> right. And if somebody trained with them for a handful of months and then left, you know, they need people more, more, they would need people more often and, you know, longer now when i opened the when i started teaching um you know how my studios i knew that most adults were going to only be able to do you know a couple weeks maybe a couple months yes you know you, you get people that maybe you know if they stay longer than two or three months you know that's like an insane bonus so my goal was to at least give them the right skills as fast as possible before, before, you know, they either got hurt doing something, you know, they changed jobs. They started having kids and getting married and doing the other stuff. So my goal is like, if they trained with, uh, with me for a few weeks that they would walk away and be like, have something that would stay with them for the rest of their lives. Absolutely. You know, and then if you stayed on longer than like six, eight weeks, you know, then we got into some of the, then we got into the other stuff where it's like, you know, if, I mean, and that's where the self-defense training system came in. It was based off of those weeks. So it's like somebody stayed with me for like, train with me legit for a year. You'd be pretty freaking good. That's you right. Know, you'd be good to go. That stuff would be hardwired in you. Now, if you wanted to stay on, guess what? We're doing judo. We're doing knockdown karate. We're doing jujitsu. I mean, we're doing all the other stuff that, um, what I say would be uh, secondary or, um, yeah, uh, you know, supporting skill sets which take take longer to develop. Um, so they, um, you know, so that's where you know these guys, you know, they don't like us because they. Um, they get, uh, you know, upset because we're fucking up their um, their business model. That's right. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it's like, you know, look, I'm like, so they're like, oh, don't believe this guy. I'm like, great. So you're telling me not to, you know, I always love it because my response is like, okay, so don't believe the guy. I'm like, I'm trying to rip you off where for like 50 bucks, I'm going to show you what you can use right now, yep. but no, they should believe the guy that wants charge you thousands of dollars to train for a year 
on stuff that may or may not work. Even if we, even if we said we're doing the same. So what are we saying? Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm the guy trying to rip you off. Of course. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, kids, you know, again, like when you start hearing these types of things, fucking um, run. <laughs> Run, don't walk. It's like, look, man. And if you line up in, you know, if you're always like, if you're practicing self-defense and you line up and you always line up in rows and, you know, there's certain times to do that for sure, you know, but it's like, you know, that's not first teaching you how to do a wrist grab, you know, wrist release again, I, I, I beat on this thing, but it's, you know, it drives me crazy, you know, teaching how to do a wrist release, um, is a waste of fucking time. Yep. Somebody grabs your wrist. Said it's only like if again, not like everyone's grabbing everybody's wrist, but if the you know the intent is either to pin you and then stab or punch you or to pull you someplace you don't want to go. Like if it's a boyfriend and a and a and you know a man uh, pulling you're trying to pull a woman. Um, if a, if it's a man grabbing a woman's wrist, he's most likely trying to pull her someplace. Or get her to turn around. And if it's a guy grabbing a guy's wrist, he's mostly trying to pin him so he can punch him or stab him or hit him over the head with something. So, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's not that wrist grab isn't the attack. It's the be beginning of the attack. And it has little or no consequence on, you know, the, the actual assault. And that's where everybody focuses their energy. Yeah, it's 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 the distraction. It's no different than walking down the street, paying attention to your fucking cell phone, or having the the headphones and like we were talking about earlier, or whatever. Right? It's right. it's a distraction. That's all it is. Don't fall for the distraction. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. So the one thing I do want to show. Um, hold on a second. Uh, da -da. All right. Did you see the story on the hockey player? that got the fight with the parents no no all right so i'll set up a story just another fucking we'll sporting it. event gone wrong eh <laughs> he's a high school a high school hockey player attacked a parent okay so apparently um uh this is in pennsylvania in hamar township uh shaler high school hockey player was suspended indefinitely from play and charges are pending against two parents following a now viral video, which we'll show in a moment. Uh, it happened on February 10th um, in Harmer Township. The video shows junior, uh, junior high school athlete uh, in full uniform and skates rushing up the stands, throwing a punch directly at a Latrobe parent before fans jump in to break it up. Police are investigating it. Said it started between the parent, the player's parents, and the parent from the opposing team. So, uh, yeah. So according to the police report, uh, the parent claimed uh, that from so they got Latrobe and Schaller, Shaler. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, they were, the parents were complaining that the pl the player was too aggressive, yeah. <laughs> and was throwing punches on the ice during the game. He wanted to talk to the player directly afterwards. So first and foremost, parents, you don't approach another child. You approach their coach. First you approach your coach. And then he approaches the referee or the other coach. You don't engage a minor directly at all. So parents, Completely out of line, right? Refs are there to make sure this shit doesn't happen. I didn't see what was happening on the ice. I don't know what was happening. Um, but, you know, if the ref's job is to make sure that things are being played fairly. So, you know, you've got the chain of command here. Now you're putting yourself directly talking to a parent. Because I have news for you. If like you're going at my kid and you're a parent from another team, we're uh, going to have a conversation. Yeah. Right? So, you know, there you go. And uh, so, uh, you know, the, like these, these people at these, you know, again, people just are, they don't understand boundaries. 
you know, and this was, this is what's, what's happened. And this is, and this, I can't say is like a, uh, a new thing because I think this has been happening all over. I mean, I'll tell you the story about how I, uh, started a, um, well, let me show you the clip and then I'll get into that. You know, I'll get into that last story. So let's just, uh, All right, good. And this was on Barstool. Let me see. You see that? Okay, cool. All right. back there just like oh, i'm fucking with this <laughs> yeah again i mean i'm amazed like that kid covered some ground on those skates yeah fuck did he ever <laughs> <laughs> i mean he climbed up some bleachers and got into it jesus and tuned that guy up but again you know again you know what's the what's the old uh saying you know if you if you think you have some authority try bossing somebody else's you know try bossing somebody else's dog around <laughs> jesus. right i'm like you know, you're a parent. What are you going to do? What's your end game here? <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell that kid. <laughs> you know, I, I just, you know, and, it, and it, you know, again, you're looking at this thing where, um, let's shut the volume off. Let me just watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> What are you gonna do? <laughs> it's like I'll tell you what I'm gonna fucking yeah, do. Yeah, let me fucking show you. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! And that dude, his reaction was what? You saw him coming, <laughs> right? And everybody's shocked. Right. What do you think of the woman's face? But that's that oh shit moment, <laughs> right? Where he's like coming up, he's like, oh, he's coming, he's coming. Yeah. What's he gonna do? You know, you ain't fucking, you ain't ready for that shit. And he could meet, he immediately sat down. You know, I mean, he's on skates running, punching up. You know, how hard, you know. Hey, go, oh, it hey, relax. Relax. Hey, relax. I got this stuff. Now, is the guy in the gray – see, I'm trying to figure out who the players are, right? The guy in the gray is um, – I guess he's on the parent team. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I guess he knows he's holding that kid back. Uh, he's not getting the fuck off, by the way. No, this guy's got him. Relax, I got this guy. <laughs> right? <laughs> the rest, like, hey, you ain't paying me enough. <laughs> right. Fuck that. That's let security security take care of him. Hands on the fucking hips and everything. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Like, you know, I mean, I wonder how much he played a role in all this. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Maybe he was just letting the kid punch him. <laughs> right. I'm like, I, I, that's what I think. You know, a lot of these guys, and it's tough. Look, my heart goes out to uh, people who, uh, to refs that ref high school sports, because again, people expect the same level of as a professional ref that they do on a high school level. Uh, you know, and this is every sport across the board. And when they see it and they miss it, they lose their mind and they think it's going to be on replay and like justice will be done. 
<laughs> you know, and it's human. I'm like, you got to look, unless there's a safety issue involved, I won't go nuts. I mean, if, listen, if you make a bad call, I'll say something, but I'm not going to, you know, chase you in the parking lot after. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you know, frustrating. I'm like, you can write letters and do whatever you want, but you know, sometimes these guys don't do a good job of controlling the game. Again, I don't know what happened here. Um, so they allow this to kind of happen. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, um, you know, the, really the, the responsibility falls on the adults or the parents. I mean, the, the kid didn't get hurt. Maybe, maybe the kid was cheap shotting them again. There's no reason for you to talk directly to a child in any fucking sporting event ever, ever. You know, so parents, whatever you're doing, stop that shit. You know, and it's always hockey. I, I, the only guess is that it's a contact sport in a closed arena where fans would, you know, are like on the ice. Like football is spread out, right? So it's like you're outside, big stadium, people are separated. You really can't hear what people are saying, mm -hmm. you know, but once you get indoors, you can hear everything. And, you know, that's where, yeah, you know, things get personal. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So uh, the last, the one thing, so speaking of this, um, <laughs> when I was in seventh grade, yeah. Seventh grade. Yes. <laughs> Playing little league baseball. And this one kid who's a year older than me was like busting my balls. Busting my balls the whole game. <laughs> so it was upsetting me. And I went to my brother. No, wait, I was in seventh grade. I was in fifth grade. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just thinking about, yeah, fifth grade. He was in sixth grade. So I went to my brother, who's like six, seven years older than me. He was watching the game. It was like my brother, my mom, my dad. So you had like all, all the parents are like on this baseball field is down here. Everyone's like up on a hill as it goes down. Um, so I said to my brothers, like after like the second inning, I'm like, this dude keeps talking shit. I'm like, what am I going to do? He's like, tell him if he says one more thing, you'll deal with him after the game. I'm like, okay. All right. <laughs> so that kid said, and I told him that so I got on first and he's like, starts to shit. I go, dude, I go, you say one more thing after the game, we'll get to take care of this. That kid just said one more thing and then didn't say anything <laughs> for the rest of the like five innings. <laughs> so we're shaking hands at the end of the game and I came up to him and I just fucking headlocked him yeah. on home plate and started like punching him in the face <laughs> I was gonna say just, just at this knife. time his dad was the other coach <laughs> dude grabs me and Jack pulls me off his kid and jacks me up in the backstop like my my feet are dangling <laughs> this is the moment pandemonium ensued yeah. my dad flew down and grabbed him off me and jacked him up my brother was like screaming and free he was like you know shit 16 years old screaming <laughs> and they're pushing and parents and people are fighting and moms are going nuts and this lasted for like five ten minutes I mean, I remember just walking onto the pitcher's mound and sitting there with my buddy Rick. <laughs> like, holy shit. It's pretty <laughs> fucking wild. <laughs> All I remember is my dad lost his pipe. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude. Welcome to me and my life. <laughs> and this was like, yeah, that was that that was hysterical. And you know, no one got hurt, no one pressed charges at the end of the day. Everyone went about their business and I had seen the kid later and it's like no big deal. Right. It just, it, whatever it happened, it was done. It was over. Um, you know, nowadays that same fucking kid would have come back with like a gun or something. <laughs> possibly. Yes. <laughs> you know, or the parents and the cops and yeah. everybody, you know, it was like, look, nobody got hurt. You know, we only really did something back then if somebody got like really hurt Yeah, and had to go to the doctor. I mean, there's always some people, but most times it's like, Hey man, you know, you do it fucked up you know that's it 
right? And this is how you grew up also to respect other people. I don't think that other kid probably didn't, you know, break too many balls after that. Right. I'm like, you know, because there's two sides. It's like when a bully is bullying and then the bully gets, you know, resistance and then he learns, holy crap, maybe I shouldn't be bullying people. Yeah. You know, that happens and that's real. And on the other, on the other hand, Make no mistake, there are kids that get tortured. Absolutely, yeah, tortured, and it's awful, you know. And and that's where you know there's there's something to you know making sure that you know kids aren't bullied. They're in a safe environment, and things like that. But even when my kid was growing up, you know, he's both of them. They were like, you know, the last thing they really wanted to do was tell a teacher because that all of a sudden gets, you know, it makes it worse. Yeah, it makes it kind of you know. I'm like now you're like it's weird. You know, you get. You know, I hate to use the term snitch, but that's what people, that's what some of the kids view as. Yep, absolutely. Right? As weak. So, I mean, look, I remember, you know, being in grammar school and older kids, you know, um, picking me out. And then, you know, me being, you know, uh, my, th- my my guess is that they were all pissed off because I had to deal with my brother. And they figured they're, they'll get their, you know, they'll get their, you know, <laughs> comeuppance with me. You know, I remember going to school, you know, walking to school, being nervous, be, you know, being scared, sick to my stomach, and then just, you know, having to deal with it eventually. You know, I'm yeah. not going to lie. You know, I mean, there were times that I'm like, I, I, didn't, I, I said I didn't feel well and didn't go to school. And then there are times where I'm like, okay, there's something inside me that said, fuck this, and I'm just going to go deal with this kid. And, yeah, and, you know, it's when some – when someone doesn't know how to wrestle and you do, it's like, you know, as a kid, you know, they don't stand a chance. Yeah. It's hysterical. And all they do is like double leg takedown and just punch them in the face till they cried. <laughs> and then that was it. It was over. It's not like they really got hurt. You know, mm-hmm. like how much, you know, I'm a fourth grader, fifth grader, you know, how much power am I actually generating? Right. <laughs> You know, it's only when testosterone kicks in when we really can start doing some damage. But, you know, so, I mean, that's where, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're with, you know, when you're, you know, you're trying to like, you know, what's happening now with kids and people and violence is that, you know, a lot of them, you know, we always overestimate, you know, what our abilities are because everybody doesn't want to admit that they really don't know what they're doing and they can't fly Right. Exactly. So, you know, that's that. So it looks like our time is done, my brother. Another right, day. <laughs> Another day. Everybody enjoy Saint uh happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh have fun, but not too much fun. Have the right amount of fun because yeah, you know there's gonna be you know fun. there's gonna be a lot of assholes doing stupid shit tonight. <laughs> yep, yeah, can't wait. That's, that's why that's why I don't go out. <laughs> 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 all right everybody thank you for coming and if you're watching this recording um please uh you know thank you very much don't forget look in the description if you want there's some free training you take the free combatives course with us uh it's great uh, i want to thank you tom uh for commenting robert thank you very much everybody until next time train honestly <laughs>